Proud and Soil Pepper Chat. So we're here today just to talk about the current happenings of the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm here with Michelle, Kamal, Anashe, Grace, Jesse, and I'm Yande. So we've obviously been um, seeing a lot of things happening on the news and the media, and everybody's obviously very angry and frustrated by what's been going on with the Black Lives Matter movement. So my question would be, just to begin, can we relate with what's happening in America and what's happening in Australia at the moment as Africans? Yes, mm. I mean, because if we were there, mm. it would happen to us. Mm. And it technically kind of is happening here, but it's just not as documented. And I guess it's not as like outwardly like put out here as it is in America. Mm. So either way, it's happening to us. Yeah, for sure. And like the other shop. Yeah. It must be also. Yeah. What do you mean it's happening to us here? Like, racism is everywhere in Australia, like whether you realise it or not. Like, um, personally, I've experienced it um, through when I was like looking for a job. You know how when you're 14, you can mm. start getting a job? Yeah. All my friends had jobs. Mm. I couldn't get a job. I got my first job at the age of 20. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't because I wasn't applying or anything, but it was, I even had like friends try to bring me where they were working. Wow. And the boss like just never like, my dad even wanted to talk to him. Wow. And he was just like, they're just not hiring me at the moment. And then um, there was a girl that moved down my street. She was white. The next thing she had a job there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh. <laughs> so I feel like that was like my first real experience like, with racism. Mm. And for a while I just didn't understand because my parents were always like, it's gonna be hard for you. But like I was just kinda like for me, because it, it wasn't like an obvious thing mm. like happening to me. Mm. It's just kinda like very subtle. Yeah, yeah, very subtle. So it's like that was the first time that I really like did it. Like the racism yeah. is here as well. So have you guys ever experienced that as well. Have you guys had a similar situation where you've had to, you know, obviously experience like the subtle racism that you might be experiencing here? Yeah, definitely. Like, <clears throat> say at school, obviously, I guess I'm different in the way that I came here from another white country. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have that stereotypical African accent and whatever. And just having a name like Panache, which for me, I think is a simple name. But having to say my name is Panache, feeling like I have to say my name is Panache, and even now to this day I still go, oh hi, my name's Panache. Actually, it's Panache. Wow. Just things like that made me realize this is racism. Wow. This is me trying to like assimilate myself so I can blend. Okay. Even though I'm still black. Yeah. I'm still black. And being being in a position where even on my resume I'll say born in the UK to give me that upper hand because I know they're going to see Panache Shangani and they're going to be like, mm. but then they see born in the UK they go, oh, okay. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. It makes yeah. me wonder if I had an experience in Australia. Especially when I was 14. Um, well, my name is Grace. Mm. It is a very white name. Yeah. Mm. And my last name is Rukanaisa <coughs> and most people think it sounds, um, what's it called, German? So getting jobs in terms of through online application has always been easy. Mm. That once I'm actually in the job, especially through my first job at McDonald's, when I was living in a small rural area in um, the mid north coast of um, New South Wales called Corsada, you know, it was very rural, not much Africans, but because of my name. Mm. I think my application just went through easy. Wow. But once I, I was actually in the job, they never put me on the checkouts. I was always I was always in the back doing the uh, fries, mm -hmm. or I'd be on dining, cleaning the tables wow. in the toilets. And my shifts I used to hate them so much because I wanted to be at the checkout so I can have that you know, yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. But they never put me. Mm. They just, I literally just went on there for the training. Wow. And that was it. Mm. Yeah, and then my second job, which was also 
is it for me to get oh or is that a waste as a check actually i did experience like racism that right from the very beginning and that's when i think it's interesting i said for me mm. even my city bikes as well and because my skin rate was perfect i was in the job wow. like i was i had a very high skin rate i was really fast i was skinny groceries mm. that kept in the job and that was the only compliment i ever received for my supervisors wow so if it wasn't for that would i have had a job <sighs> that's interesting that is yeah. racist it's not direct that but it's that it. yeah for me personally i guess um it would be like racism facing racism personally i feel like the only one time that i've actually faced it directly in my face was like when i was going to school because we went to school like three of us which is walking distance and i was walking on the wrong side of the road and you know with when bike with bike paths it's meant to be like i think you you stay on your left mm -hmm. and then it, yeah obviously if the bike's coming your way then you just keep left and then obviously they, they drive they ride past you um so i feel like for me personally um experiencing racism here um i was walking down to school and i didn't know which way to stay and the man was like in this country we stay on our left and then he just drives past and i was like okay cool you know like so it was a bit um yeah it was a bit yeah like i was i was shocked but then from then i haven't really expressed experienced it that much except i see it in the way that we're treated in workplaces um you know like you don't see a lot of black people getting promotions you know or getting higher up in positions because there's that prejudice and i think even sometimes for work personally i notice that people are shocked when you're like i don't need to work that much they're like but where are you getting your money from so like mo mo like most of the time i would travel a lot and i didn't work a lot and me not needing my workplace was a, was confusing to my workmates because they couldn't understand that how you're traveling, how you're traveling and everything like that so they just yeah. expected you to yeah they expected me to just to be important. yeah and i would be very like I, i've noticed that if you're very picky or if you're if if you as a black person have some sort of entitlement you can't stand it yeah <laughs> <laughs> like if you if you like i think it's just an expectation that black people are poor where they come from is not you know developed we when you speak well oh wow you, your accent's actually mm. really good yeah. you know yeah <laughs> so it's also yeah. Like, yeah. lack of education yeah exactly they actually do that because, yeah because when i was working with, with children like mm. i have little kids ask me like why are you black yeah you know wow. <laughs> or yeah. um they'll just say like really offensive stuff mm. because their parents really don't they don't teach, teach them. them yeah, yeah. You know, like even little kids would just ask you like, "Why are you black?" Mm. And then go, "Are you from America?" Because my mom says there's blacks in America. Wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's actually really yeah. interesting. Yeah, because and it comes back down to ignorance in within the Australian community mm -hmm. again. Because I don't think we've actually we've come here. Obviously, Africans are very new to Australia, but it's you can tell that there's a lot of ignorance as to what Africans. Like where we come from, you know, where like what what we are, because I'm pretty sure everybody has experienced a point where somebody's like, "You guys live in huts," and yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. yep. Did you go out? Yeah. Just to expect you to yeah. know the way. Even in my current workplace, what I get all yeah. the time is like, "Oh, were you born in Australia?" And then I I'd be like, "No, it's, I came here when I was ten." Yeah, and they're like, "Oh wow, you sound very." Very very educated. Yeah, very yeah. educated. Oh, yeah. Your English is really good. Yeah, it's like they're shocked that they can understand exactly. you. Exactly. Wow. They expect you to have yeah. some sort of accent or just have, you know, minimal level of English. Yeah, for Which sure. Is not yeah, the case. This is not <laughs> the case. Yeah. yeah. That is very crazy. So, like coming from that perspective then, like where it's like obviously there's a lot of ignorance in our community and obviously that attributes and contributes racism did you guys want to share you know instances when you know like maybe growing up like how you've experienced that for yourselves 
I guess, like just have you had instances where you had to educate? Like, how do we educate? And have you had instances in your life, like educating people in your culture? Is there like what's been the response to that? As a young woman, I think I experienced that in a very limited voice. Mm. Again, I grew up in a rural, small Australian town mm. where the population was predominantly black and white. Mm. In my school, I think I was the only black girl in, in grade 10. Mm. So the 11 boys would like make comments about my thumb or my lips, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know, just very sexual comments about my, you know, black. Features. Wow. In as a young woman, where I was still developing my identity, you know, trying to be confident in my own skin, I thought that was very offensive, okay. and I didn't know how to deal with it. Right. And then it's really like difficult to go to your teachers and say, "Can you lend my voice that sexual comment that such and such, mm. and it makes me feel uncomfortable?" Mm. You know? Yeah. And that was normal because then they would turn around and say. You know, they use Australian slides to make the same comments about white teenage you know, mm. or bum slide or, you know, mm. stuff like that. I think to answer your question, that is my experience. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Like, um, I feel like obviously that might also come from like media perceptions of black people and, you know, like what people know about our community and our culture so the next question would be you know like obviously the this whole this whole situation with the black lives matter movement has brought up up people who love black features black culture you know love the aspect of being black and these slangs like i remember me and irene today were talking about how you know, you you have people come up to you and be like, "Hey sis, hey girl, what's up?" You know, like it's like it's a it's a thing. Like it's cool to to be black, but obviously now that this is this is happening, um, you know, people are just keeping quiet, and you know, there's no, you know, voices being spoken about. And I think my worry would be that this is all just clout, just to make it make ourselves look good. So, did you guys want to share your thoughts on that? The issue of blackness mm. within our society it has been negative or represented within our like within the Western um, media mm. and Western it's society. Yeah. yeah. So we have to stand up for what is going on because we have been uh, represented as people who are uneducated right. criminals, folks. Yeah. And so, like as a black person, if you go to America, mm. you must you must likely face the same situation mm. and the issue of black lives matter is it's not about police brutality mm. it's about the system as well right okay. how right. The, our education how systematic, systematic racism yeah. and all those stuff like that and yeah. that's the same thing that we are, we are faced with within australia mm. like in terms of like getting the jobs instead of like macro like racism or discrimination within society so i, I don't think we have it's, it's time for us to stand up for mm. our for our right. color okay. yeah and mm. it's not like we just want to do it because of love, but it takes something to move something. Right. And this this one is a situation that actually like we we are tired. Right. Yeah. yeah. Once a person is tired, like mm. they have to like stand up for the for the right because right. it's something like our forefathers like after slavery you have Jim Crow and you have like uh, segregation within America and right. all this stuff like that. We have been pleading to the world society mm. we want our rights mm. right mm. it's kind of like i can always give this uh, example like if i'm hungry right and i see you have food mm. right and every time i come and ask you for food mm. and you say oh i have no food at the end of the day right mm. what what do you think i'm going to do right i'll Skip. come yeah i'll come with folks yeah to, yeah by force i have to take what is mine right. yeah because i'm hungry yeah, yeah and it's the same like thing black people have been asking for like Equality, equal mm. rights, mm. Or, or, or equal right to housing, equal right to jobs in in, in America. Mm. And yes, still like their their or uh, uh, plea is has like has been heard in 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 the society. And it's the same thing with Australia as well. Like we we, we are from Africa and we, we share the same blackness. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, like, are we? I don't think we're experiencing like. 
Like obviously it's very like subtle. Yeah. You know, there's little things, but I don't think it's to the extent of like America. Yeah. So then how how because, would you attribute that to Africans here? Yeah, because yeah. we are young Australia is a very young nation. Right. Right. And Australia with with the society the way it's in, it's kind of like uh that's because they are middle class, they are middle middle nation, right? Mm-hmm. They want to be heard in, in on the international stage. Right. So Australia won't be like, oh, because it's something that they fight for. They fight mm-hmm. for equality. Mm-hmm. They fight for like justice for mm-hmm. people. But at the same time though, they want on the international stage, people see Australia to be like a country that is like the fighting for equality. But then within our own territory, yeah. there's a lot of things that is going that on going that on. we need to face. Okay. Like indigenous people we need to discuss okay. it. Right? Okay. That's why when you bring about the discussion of indigenous people, mm. then it becomes a problem. Wow. Because we don't yeah. want to, they don't want to talk discuss about it. it. Yeah, because right. at the end of the day though, mm. you have to recognize a problem yeah. before solving the yeah. problem. Yeah, sure. So they don't want to recognize yeah, yeah. there's a problem within our community. So mm-hmm. therefore they have to know that problem. They say, yeah, we're doing everything for these people. Right. They have access to like uh, okay. a center where you pay government payment. Okay, they so have done yeah, everything. They everything. Right. Well, right. Welfare. Okay. Yeah, they think they have done enough for these people. But mm-hmm. yeah, is that problem goes into history. Right. Yeah? yeah. The simulation mm-hmm. policy. Mm-hmm. So the issue of like indigenous people is all mm-hmm. about like white being superior and black being inferior right because anywhere we go mm-hmm. anywhere the european if you look at history of the european mm-hmm. empires like the british empire mm-hmm. when they went to africa it's the same thing right? right they went to africa and they changed our culture right. they changed our way of life right, right. and right. they introduced their own way of life the what was that ideologies. because yeah, yeah because they felt that their culture was was like the superior to black culture right. and it's the same thing they in Australia, mm. right? In America, like they took over the Indians. Mm. And, and everywhere to go. So the issue of blackness is what we're it's talking about. Okay, it's so all that's, going to be so like what you're saying is the Black Lives Matter movement matters so much more now because we're fighting against the consistent oppression yes, of, of blackness. Black people and of blackness. blackness. Okay. Not just of black American yeah. or African American or African Yeah, Australian. just blackness. Yes. Okay. Because right. the issue of blackness mm-hmm. will all have that same negative connotation, like stereotype of being uneducated, being mm-hmm. of uncivilized, right. being of, of brutal and, and thugs and, and rebellion and right. stuff like that. Right. And, right. And, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see? Animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we can relate. Yeah. We can relate. Because mm-hmm. if you look at the media mm-hmm. in Australia, how they represent African as mm. thoughts, right? Yeah. As they, as yeah. Yeah. And look at how the same thing they do, like yeah. the CAN in America, which is the same representation, the representation of black of black, of black people. people. Right. So we relate somehow to yeah. like, what and is when happening. Black people are doing good, you don't hear about it. You don't right. hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That is because true. and that's why because yeah. they want to make us feel valueless in society. They don't want us to say, oh like black people, they are valued people in society. Mm. And that's the reason why we look at when we see ourselves, we, we hate ourselves sometimes, right? Yeah, because sure. we feel like we have like contribute to this society that we in live in, way, right? right? In any way, but we have yeah. contributed a lot. If we have, it's not recognized. Yeah, yeah. That is exactly. Crazy, yeah. But the more you yeah. recognize it, because when you recognize something, then you say, okay, yeah, this person did it, but they don't really want to recognize it. Yeah. Because if you recognize it, then you add value to, to, that, to, that, to that thing. But then, right? then that's still an issue because black people still kind of, it seems that they we're against ourselves anyway. If that makes sense. Like yeah, because, like, because, yeah, because that's yeah, how the right? nature of so it's we like, are in general. You're saying that we've been, we've, because of those mental pictures of who we are, generation yeah. after generation, generation after generation, generation. Yeah. such okay. as yeah. your Afro hair is not beautiful. Right, right. Yeah. The yeah. white standard of beauty. Yeah, that's true. Bleaching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have to recognize you're too loud too. when you're, oh, you have opinions yeah. Yeah. and you want to be heard. You're too mm-hmm. loud. Or yeah. even within the education system, we don't talk about African empires. Right. We don't talk about African history. Right. We don't, we we don't, don't speak any history. of us. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't know much about African I history. I don't know much about yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but um, have you noticed that we only start learning about indigenous, like, history? In uni. Right. Yeah. Yes, it's like, true. Yeah. That's actually, why does it take you that long? Yeah, to learn about it. You did, yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't in there. Yeah. That's something yeah. that the right government, when you apparently recognized, oh, he it was. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't yeah. that deep. Yeah. Was yeah. It? So no. if I, I was in Uni yeah. 2013. 
You right. know, the right government started from 2009 or mm -hmm. back, just, I'm not sure, but yeah. I, I don't know the facts, but I know Brad was in power from 2009 yeah. up until maybe 12. So when yeah. I was in, after that apology speech mm -hmm. and whatever he did, he knew Ted was going to be in the government and he was mm -hmm. history and culture. But how just but like, has yeah. anything changed? Like has oh, anything changed? Oh, 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 if you look at, let's say, uh, media in general, that's the easiest way you can control someone's mind. This mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter thing started from 1641, wow. but they don't call it Black Lives Matter. Wow. It's just now that we're calling it Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. All the protests, all the Martin Luther Kings, it's all Black Lives Matter. It mm -hmm. all comes down to, to Black Lives Matter. We want to matter into society. Like we have contributed so much into society that mm -hmm. it's not being uh, recognized for. Even the uh, C-sections. C-section started from Africa. Wow. They took it from Africa and then but yeah, it's never recorded. Mm -hmm. It's never recorded because like even the even like the, the surgery with the with the brains. Mm -hmm. It started from Africa. There's a whole video about it and the natives of Africa, how it started. It all started from Africa. Wow. We have contributed so much to society that we're not being recognized for. Yeah. And um rest in peace to George Floyd, but I think his death is one of the reasons why now people are really um pushing in uh, into like we want to matter like like um, pushing it in that way in the sense that okay, our our forefathers um did not have what we have now, which is technology, yeah. which is the internet. They never had it back then. And the easiest way for information to travel is through is through technology. internet, yeah. and through technology. Right. So I think now that we really need to educate the um, the young ones coming up. Because exactly. we are still fighting for the struggle. Do we want yeah. our children to fight for the same struggle no, that our no, four, four grandfathers have been fighting yeah. for since no. 1641? Yeah. So we want to break this for the generation. So yes, the generation yeah. we, we yeah. need to break it. We, yeah. we need, we need them like to understand that. We're fighting, we're fighting racism from an individual perspective. It's mm. the system and the way it's designed. It's designed it's yeah. to, designed to, uh, yeah. to support and benefit the people right the world. Yeah. It is. In the current people in power right now, it's you know, generations than from our colonizers, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it true that it's have that right, right. 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 mindset yeah. 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 Say something about not importing American um is it American movements into Australia. Into Australia. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. the reason why you said that is because that Indigenous people have been silent a long time as well, mm. right? So if we try, if we start to stand up oh, yeah, for, for indigenous, the indigenous people, people, then they will rise yeah. up too against yeah. 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 the status quo, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and that's what makes this, this yeah. new movement it's is very powerful. It's being led. Yeah. Yeah. Now they right? have it. Because mm. yeah. they don't have the indigenous people don't have that education mm. to read between the lines to say, oh yeah, oh, we have to stand up, stand up for our rights. I believe they, they have been their rights. Their rights. Yeah. 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 We have to stand up for stand up for our rights. I believe they, they have their the yeah, yeah, no, no, majority. Yeah, yeah, that's not the majority. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah
we're like this is because of two things like the easiest way to control someone is through fear mm-hmm. and the easiest way to put your ideas in someone is, is by you controlling them and mm-hmm. by them being divided like right now africa africans we're, we're divided yeah like, that's true we, like if we if we unite mm-hmm. and uh, and we can say okay look we've united we can stop being controlled let's say Nkrumah. Nkrumah wanted to um to unite africa because they believe that if Africa is, is united, all of these racism things mm-hmm. it will literally mm-hmm. be, yeah. it will be so moderate, it might not even occur. Yeah, for you sure. Know, so I think the best way to, to let's say, to, to be racist to someone is, is by keeping them divided. Mm-hmm. And divided in terms of, um, like, how this Black Lives Matter thing is going on, it's bringing some form of unity. Right. Some mm-hmm. form of, like, you can see um, the African community, uh, in, in, let's say, the UK, France, they're all, they're all coming together because I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I yeah, think we, we can relate to it because they are Africans. Right. And if it's we go to if we yeah. go to America, mm. we are classified as Africans. They, they wouldn't know if we're black Our Americans or not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I think that mm. if every single African yeah, it affects them one way or another. Yeah, for sure. And and the best way to, to do it is uh, like we need to start um start supporting ourselves. Like mm. Africans we have a, we have our own economy. Right. You know, back then, I think in the 1900s, during, I think during the segregation period, like the black economy was was literally boom, wow. and the and the white economy wasn't because we were funding all of our money um, into into that economy, and and people that spend much money than any other ethnicity is is blacks. Wow. We spend mm-hmm. so much money um, in 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 the white in the white economy. Mm-hmm. We spend so much yeah. money in the white economy, like yeah. like it's only. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Even, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like black business owners, they're always like pushing for the other black people to invest in their businesses. It's always like, oh, invest in, you know, yeah. black yeah. businesses. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't, because yeah, we are thought yeah. to hit ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We, That's a big we, we are thought to hit ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even like um, Africans were, were in um, um, exhibitions in zoos. Yeah, for like, sure. Like the, the little Congolese, um, Congolese girl. She, she was she was like, yeah. she was portrayed as an animal. Like right, people actually right. paid to go watch her to and start shaking their heads. So I think yeah. we we are like thought to hate ourselves. So that's right. why all these all these black um, businesses around, people don't want to like buy it because they feel like, oh, okay, if I buy it and then um, she's going to be better than me. Yeah, right. it's a competition. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. It's a competition. Yeah. Oh, like, like, who would prefer to go give the, the, the white man $500? Rather than giving our, our, our own um, um, brothers and sisters who, who are running business, having dogs. Well, but it's but, a pressure. Uh, also, like, we've grown up with yeah. that, though. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's like, as a small business, obviously your things are going to be a little bit more pricier mm. than larger businesses. Mm. So when you see, like, oh, I can get this cheaper mm. somewhere else, people are more like, well, I'm going to save money. Yeah. Instead of, like, let me support this black business mm. and then it'll grow and things will get cheaper. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, yeah. but, yeah, we just don't think like that and then we just... Yeah, it's, I don't know what it is, but it's, like, from the beginning, we, like, what you were saying... We have been taught to hate ourselves. We've been taught to hate ourselves. We have been taught it. Yeah. I think it's mm-hmm. time for us to invest into our education and educate ourselves on our history. Yeah, on our history and yeah. yeah, because once we read our history then we become we see ourselves as valuable yeah. people in society, yeah? yeah. And what what is this is that like it's time for us to like Africa as well, like Jesse was saying. It's the only way the black people, from my point of view, mm-hmm. we can actually be respected mm-hmm. and our we can actually be dignified in society is when Africa is built. Right. Because if Africa is not built, all our cries and all we can protest how we want, cry what we want, but our cry and our sympathy will always be near the end of it. Yeah. These people want to see us like, okay, you know what? We have to like okay yeah what do you want mm-hmm. but so yes we, we actually yeah. exactly yeah. we yeah. need yeah. them yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so true. like, like but, yeah but if we have a successful yeah, yeah. yeah if okay. we have a successful yeah. nation like in, like in africa, in africa and yeah. like, continent yeah. Africa, yeah. 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 and places that we can actually yeah. go because africa is the only place that as as black men you don't get judged based because on your skin your color, color, right? Yeah. It's because on your on your character, yeah, right? It's so it's yeah. time for us to like build Africa like how we want to be. So mm-hmm. therefore we have to like gather all our resources here yeah. and go back to Africa and build 
Africa for ourselves. Mm. Yeah, it will be a long time. It will be a long time. But think about think about your your children because you don't want the children to experience this same thing. Yeah, for now we need to fight this system. Yeah, of course. The only way to fight it, the only way to fight it, um, what I do believe, the only way to fight it is that let's say, um, Africans, because I don't want to say, um, I don't want to like put the stigma of blacks, because mm. I, because I believe that we are Africans. Mm. Yeah, Africans need to hold, let's say, have prominent positions in certain, in certain um, um status in society. Status yeah. in society yeah. being yeah. that, let's say, um, we have over uh let's say five hundred thousand um, um african attorneys mm -hmm. definitely if you kill a black man you're gonna get the highest form of punishment for that because you're gonna sit in front of a black attorney mm -hmm. you know what i mean like obviously when they do that oh okay the guy's a white he's a white attorney because mm -hmm. even if you look um both sides sideways are black he's a white guy and that's a white guy you're gonna have some form of empathy on it mm -hmm. you know what i mean like why do you think that most um most africans get so much um time in, in imprisonment like you can get like eight Sixty eight months, then they give you like ten years. It's because he's African, and that's that's a, that's a white attorney. Like a white person can do the same crime, and then they'll give him less. Mm. 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 Is it that that because of the These people are already prejudged in the mind. Like we, they are not against society, right? right? right. So before you, you stand in front of judges or you know, any stuff, you know, like okay, this guy is already guilty. Right. Before you can even be judged, right? Because there's two sides to every story, mm. right? Yeah. But they don't want to listen to your side of the story. They right. want to listen to what you hear on the media. On your TV and all stuff like that. Okay, so you, you, and policy exactly. And yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So if you if you go yeah. to court, then you you're gonna get locked up mm. without even being judged of what what you did for yeah. the crime. Yeah. You know, because in the mind, like you're a crim you're a criminal. Mm. And I think yeah. we've been accepting this form of racism for too long. Mm. Like we just we just yeah. accept it like oh yeah. No, but to be fair, it's not even that we accept it. It's like we almost put it on ourselves in the sense of like when I was back home in Africa, I think we were standing in a line, and white people came behind us standing in the line. No, like it's not like they had any status. They weren't like an ambassador, anything mm. like that. Yeah. Attendant at the front. Oh, who's all good? Meaning like white person. Yeah. Wow. Pushes, that pushes them through to the to the front of the line. So it's not even like a thing of, oh, you know, like we see them as gods. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like back home when you, white when black kids see white people, yeah, like that happened. Yeah, that happened. That happened when I was in when I was in Sierra Leone. I told mm. them I said it's not happening. Mm. I said he needs to like. Like he doesn't he have. He doesn't have. Yeah, like yeah. like he was walking. I said, "Where are you going, bro?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually did. I said, "Yo." So we've almost like accepted that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.